Hi, I'm Johnson Lam from Kaki DIY. Today, we're going to unbox and review the Creality Wi-Fi box. After which, we're going to do review comparing the Creality Wi-Fi box with the ever-famous Octoprint running on Raspberry Pi. Although there's a lot of review out there comparing these two from a very professional standpoint, today I'm going to review it from a beginner standpoint or maybe from a children or child's perspective. This is the box. The build quality of the box is actually quite good. And inside the box, you can get a warranty card and an English and Chinese manual. The quality of the Wi-Fi box itself isn't disappointing. And behind the box, you have your network port, USB 1, USB 2, and your power port. And two USB cable, together with a micro USB to mini USB converter. And for the power adapter, you have to provide your own as long as it's 5 volt and 2 amperes. To connect it, it's very simple. Just plug in your power cable here. And then for any of the USB port, just plug in the USB and the other side will be plugged into your 3D printer. Depending on 3D printers, you might need to use this micro USB to mini USB converter. So I'm using it on the Ender 3. I need this converter and the other end plug it into my Ender 3. I'm quite happy that the Wi-Fi box is kind of this small form factor. So I'm going to place it right here. Yep, underneath the bed. A little OCD fast forward and we are done. Looks nice. Okay, let's power it up. And it will take around 20 seconds before you start seeing blinky lights and all that. We can take this opportunity to install the Creality Cloud application on your phone. So I'm using Android and I'll download it from the Google Play Store. It's just a 20 meg file, so it's done. You just open it and well, you'll come to this main page where you can browse other people's project. And if you try to click on device, of course you have to log in and set up first. Same with your own profile, okay? So these are all the other projects people are sharing. And yeah, we can be part of this as well. So there's a little hint, you have to be in Wi-Fi environment to work. Okay, let's set up and register an account. So first of all, just put in your email and a confirmation will be sent to your email. So I'm going to do that quickly and then put in the verification code and enter my password. Okay, verification code has been sent and here it is. Everything is done and put in and I can now click on done to register my account. All right, I'm registered and I'm logged in. Well, my Samsung nagged me to save the password. And here we are. So next, we're going to add in our Creality Wi-Fi box. Very simple, just click on, see? Just tap on the plus button on the top right. And they will ask you to scan the QR code. The QR code is right below the Wi-Fi box. Very quickly, it's just identifying the ID. And from there, give it a name. Mine is called Ender Tree. Well, basically, it's just a nickname. You can name it whatever you want. And the next step is to connect your Wi-Fi box to your app. You can choose either wireless or wired. I choose wireless. And it will cast out an AP from your wireless box. Okay, so now you can remember that the password is 12345678 and make sure that you find for this Wi-Fi AP. There, there it is, okay? Just ignore the e-box, that's my solar power, my solar panel system. All right, so that's the one. And then the password is 12345678. And it will be connected soon. All right, we are connected now. And that's a message saying internet may not be available. Well, you just need to tap on keep Wi-Fi connection because we won't have internet here yet. All right, 
And this is the part where there's a lot of people complain in the forums and in the feedback that it, you actually have to do it a few times, okay? So I actually did it twice to make it work. Uh, just make sure you try to connect. If it's time out, just try it again. But if you check out on the box itself, you can see that there's a lot of activities going on. Probably it's downloading the latest update silently. All right, so let's wait for a while and you should be connected. Okay, if you can see this page, which means choose your home Wi-Fi, that means the box is ready. So choose the Wi-Fi that you want it to connect to. So I use this one, it's my home Wi-Fi, which is actually dual band 2.4 and 5G. Uh, this box only works on 2.4G. And you can see there, all right, it's blinking and connecting, which means it's already connected to your Wi-Fi, all right? And on the app itself, there, Ender 3 is now ready and connected, all right? It says it's online. And if I try to tap on it, it says that I don't have a TF card. All right, so I'm just going to put in this 32 gig, all right? And to insert it is very simple. Just make sure that the label is facing up and there. You can go in right now. So the default page is select slice to print. Okay. And from here, you can control the nozzle temperature. As you can see here is room temperature 29. Yes, it's a little bit hot here. Let me change it to 200 and see if it's working. All right. So if you're printing something, you don't need to manually change it here. It should be inside the slice, uh, the slicing profile which we're going to check it out later. Okay, we can see that it is actually heating up. Let's see if the display is showing it as well. Yes, it is. Look, it's going to a target of 200 and currently it's 75, 78, 80. But the app, you can see that it's slightly lagging. Okay, it's still showing 73, 85, but currently it's already 9800. All right, let's see fan control. All right. Okay, I turn it on and it's on. Okay, and let's try to select something to print. I can't because under my slices, there's nothing there. So basically the workflow of the app is you have to go and either find the models that you want or upload it inside. Okay, um, let's search for some calibration cubes or calibration models. Okay, there's a few to choose from. Oh look, a calibration cat, right? And let's see, there's this step ladder thingy and there's a round ball. Oh, looks like, yeah, the overhangs and stuff. Okay, uh, let's try to find a calibration cube. Okay, this particular guy uploaded quite a lot of it. And well, you can just look for something that you need and you can download it and you can slice it, okay? But let's go for the XYZ calibration cube. Okay, if I click on the first one, which is actually my slice, of course there's nothing because I haven't sliced it yet. So I click on the second icon, which actually will put it on the bed. Okay, oops. It's a little bit hard to control using touch. Okay, but zooming in is fairly simple. It's just pinch and unpinch. Okay, sliding it around will just change the view. All right, and the bottom, we need to make sure that we set our you know, printer properly. You have the CR series, the Ender series, you have others, custom. Okay, so for mine, let me see. Oh, you have some of the other Creality series here as well. Okay, and I suspected custom, if the board is supported, you can actually do that. All right, so Ender 3 selected. Okay, double check, it's there. Transform, you will be able to scale it. Okay, I want it to be 100%, so it's okay here. If not, then you can even rotate it, you can reset it. Okay, filament type PLA should be standard. Quality, okay, that's high. Uh, that's uh, industrial. Okay, high is at 0.15, normal 0.2. And let me see. Next. Hmm, filament, yes. Yeah, under custom in filaments, you can actually change the filament width. And here, yes, you can actually change the width to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.4. I'll leave it there. Height Z seams, wall thickness, and top and bottom thickness. Seems like there's not much settings you can do here. 
There's an all parameter tab right underneath slice, but it's actually just showing you the information, but you, you cannot change much of it. All right, once you click slice, then actually when you go back to your profile, you will see it under my slice, okay? Uh, you can go all the way back and let me see if you click on plus no that's adding a new model um, you click on your device and under your device itself now you can select slice to print and you will see the calibration cube which already sliced and all this slicing happens in the cloud and what happens next is you check the parameters and then you can click on print okay yep make sure that it matches and what's happening now is um, the app will then download this particular G code onto the Wi-Fi box and then following the parameters okay it's going to heat up the nozzle and heat up the bed and load it into the printer and get it ready to print okay so you can see here on the status right so it's downloaded it's loaded into the printer nozzle is okay because just now we already preheated to 200 so it saves some time and we just need to wait for the bed to heat up to 55 okay everything is heated up and the printer is ready to print you can see the use time the elapsed time is near to two minutes that's the time needed to heat up the bed and stuff and it started to print so you can see that it prints one line on the left side first which means this is like the typical Cura profile and it started already so on the app you can see that uh, the remaining time okay it stated there around 20 over minutes um, it should be quite accurate because it's calculating from the G code and the path and it's also all the speed that you use right Okay, so 24 minutes and 30 odd seconds to go. Alright, um, let's see what else we can see here. Nope, nothing there. Okay, if you have, uh, let me see, oh, the fan, you can turn on and off the fan. But usually after the first few layers, the fan will automatically turn on. Currently, I can force it to turn on and yes, it is responding. Um, and uh, over on the Ender 3 view itself, uh, if you plug in the Creality camera on the other USB port, you can actually see everything happening real time. Okay, uh, of course, okay, let me also try changing this temp, change it to 205, and let's see if it's responding as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the screen, you can see that the temperature is actually, oops, sorry, it's a little bit too bright. Let me zoom in. Okay, you can see that the target is 205. Of course, the nozzle overshoot a bit and it's going to cool itself down to 205. All right, we are on target and it's printing. Okay, I was saying that uh, if you're using the Creality original webcam, on the USB port, you will be able to see what's happening on the app. Okay, I fast forwarded it a little bit and now we have one minute left to go. Okay, and let's see, the printing looks kind of good. Okay, ignore my very poor bed because this printer has been with me for at least like 500 hours of print. Okay, and we are done. Check it out. Okay, so as per promise, what's the difference between the Octoprint or the Octopi and this Creality Wi-Fi box? So let's do a few comparison. Number one is the pricing itself. The Wi-Fi box is very cheap. It's actually just below 100 ringgit if you get it from Citron Malaysia or around 20 USD. Whereas if you set up an Octoprint on Raspberry Pi 4, the price is nearly two and a half times because the entry level, you might get it at 250 ringgit. And uh, the second thing is the ease of use. So for the Wi-Fi box, it's very easy to set up. You just use the app and you can just get it done and you can start printing within like 20 minutes. But 
for the Octopi, if you are using the Octoprint, the setup itself, you need to flash the car, you need to set up your Wi-Fi, and then add in the plugin and modules to use other stuff, like for example, even using it with an app. Uh, next is on the functionality. Of course, the Wi-Fi box itself is very basic. Um, you can just load stuff and uh, slice it and re resize it on the app, but that's almost it. And of course, you can use it remotely when you're outside as well, right? But that's almost it. Um, on the Octopi itself, you can have a lot of different plugins and all these plugins can customize it to even make it IoT, push it to the cloud, and all kinds of cool stuff as well. And uh, who is it for? All right. Um, last but not least, of course, for the Wi-Fi box, it's actually suitable for anyone, uh, especially basic beginners, kids, and people who just want a simple off-the-shelf solution to just be able to, you know, print from your mobile. A cool factor. Um, however, if you want more out of it, of course, you have to go to the Octopi. So that's it for the review today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, like and subscribe and support the channel. See you next time.